I'd like to start with a disclaimer. I'm actually a part of two of the groups that Chuck mentioned earlier. One is the totally unqualified, so please bear with me, it's my first speech. And the second group was the non-native English speakers. French is my first language, so if you don't understand what I'm saying, please come by and pinch me. <laughs> so, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. I chose this title for my speech because it's been a motto for me since very early age. It's a quote by computer scientists, a, my computer scientists from the 70s. But I've been always living through that model. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. And I'll explain why. I grew up in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, capital of Haiti, a small country in the middle of the Caribbean. We share the island with the Dominican Republic. Haiti is the poorest country in the northern hemisphere. So you really not only need to dream a future for Haiti, but you need to invent it because there's not a lot of people out there who are doing that. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a family with parents able to provide with education in a country where only 40% of the population is literate. But the real learning didn't happen in school. It happened at the dinner table every night. After hours and hours of working hard, the dinner conversation was always incredible. It was always about business and philanthropy. My parents always had five different businesses going on. And they had also started an organization called the Save the Country Organization, where they sponsored sustainable development in impoverished neighborhoods. I grew, I grew up helping with that organization, going to the countryside, helping design irrigation projects, talking to the people. I really loved it, and that is the future that I wanted to invent, a future where Haiti was self-sustaining, where everybody in Haiti was literate. And I started working on projects with my parents, but even on really good projects, like we had an apiculture project, where we would train an entire population on how to cultivate honey and, and build it and sell it. It's good for the environment, good for the people, good for education. We couldn't find funding for the project. So even though my parents were willing to finance 25% of the project with their own money, USAID, Food for the Poor, nobody else wanted to do it because at the time, they were always funding AIDS or clinical, medical type of projects in the area. So I decided at that time that my vision for the future would not be dependent on third party organizations, that I would do, go do my own capital and raise, and raise the money to be, do, do the projects myself. So I went to the US, got, a, got an education, and started working with Dell in Austin, that's what brought me to Austin, and saved I pinched every penny towards sending back to Haiti to, to start helping with these projects. So it's been eight years that we're doing, we started a Christmas party for kids who wouldn't have Christmas otherwise. So every time I go back in Haiti, in, uh, to Haiti in December, we have, last time, we started with 20 kids, last time we had about 400 kids who had Christmas, who wouldn't have had Christmas. So we're starting like that. And over time, I want to build even more schools and more projects like that. So it's a, I need to raise more funds, and I figured the Dell salary wouldn't help with my great vision. So I recently quit and, and started doing a few things full time, which also allows me to create and invent a future in different areas. For example, I love entertainment. I know all of you also like to drink with the post a meeting socials. <laughs> so my fiance and I bought Dolce Vita, a small coffee shop, we sell Italian gelato ice cream, and we have a full liquor bar, scotch, really good, recommended. So, so we, went, we started, and my vision for that was to not only 
be able at some point to have some profits from that company going towards Haiti, but also have fair trade coffee coming in and have a chain of, of Dolce Vitas around the US where I would, I would sell that coffee. That's one business going very well, and it's very rewarding from a personal level. It's fun, and I know it's going to help my country at some point. The third business I did, being a software guy at Dell, I started a company called fitcapital.com. It's a website where people such as yourself, if you're interested in fitness, you can get free advice from personal trainers and dietitians and various other fitness experts. So the future I had there was to make fitness easy, make it easy to help people lose weight. 60% of the US, of the population in the US is overweight. 30% obese, 60% overweight. I figured I could help. I'm passionate about fitness. I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about software. If that company is big, it will only be rewarding, but it will also be helping my country in the future. So I hope this little icebreaker speech inspired you to invent your own future, whether it's in philanthropy, whether it's small business like Dolce Vita, or whether it's a technology business like FitCapital.com. Thank you very much.